to this week's episode of the Lads Film Thing Podcast, where four friends discuss a film and generally have a good time. And be warned, there will be spoilers. So you've got me, I'm Lucy. Abby. Hi. Dan. Hi. And Sam. Hey. So Sam, this week was your film choice. You want to tell us a little bit about it? I would love to. So <laughs> I chose Anchorman, uh, the 2004 film which was directed by Adam McKay and stars Will Farrow as the amazing Ron Burgundy. I chose this film because it's fair to say we have had a few hard-hitting films of yeah. recent weeks and it was about time to add just a nice comedy and get us laughing and just seeing what we thought of a good old comedy. We had to take back control from Lucy, who's trying to ruin all of our lives. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so let's see what everyone thought about it. So Anchorman is set in 1974 with... Ron Burgundy, the famous anchorman for the San Diego television station KVWN Channel 4. He works with Brian Fontana, Champ Kind, and the amazing Brick Townland. <laughs> so as part of the diversity which is coming into their lives, uh, it's revealed that they need to have a female person on the news team. The scene where they announce that she's coming is one of my favourite lines of the whole film where they're asking what diversity is because they have no idea because it's 1974 and Ron says that it's an old, old boat from the Civil War. Uh, I think that that might be what the head office are talking about. <laughs> one of my favourite lines in the film is, you know, when they first meet at that party and there's loads of... There's like a couple of good lines in oh, that yeah, bit. yeah, yeah. Where... Paul Rudd's character, I can't remember what he's called. Is that Brian Fantana? He's got a clip sheet. <laughs> the text is grey on black. The text. Come on, Sam. <laughs> it's because I have to do this in the evening. That and doesn't me. make sense. <laughs> that's not an appropriate answer for my statement. <laughs> I did it in the evening, so the text is grey on black. And Safari goes to night mode. Oh, oh, now that is an appropriate okay. answer. Yeah. <laughs> Cut that out. Cut. Cut, that out. <laughs> Cut all of this. <laughs> um, yeah, so when there's two bits. One where Brian Fantano is saying that he has got a nickname for his penis. Does anyone remember what it is? <laughs> yes, the octagon. The octagon. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny. And what was his, what were the balls called? Oh, God. I can't remember. And it is classic. You are going to have to look I'm it gonna up. I'm going to Google it. Um, but when Ron's trying to... Um, just like impress her and he says i have many leather bound books and my apartment smells of rich mahogany oh, <laughs> she's yeah. just looking at him like okay mm <laughs> yeah that's my favorite line in the whole thing <laughs> i also nicknamed my testes my left one is james westfell and my right one is dr kenneth noisewater <laughs> <laughs> and as he say if you play your cards right you might meet the whole gang <laughs> Amazing. So with the arrival of Veronica, all of the news team try and hit on her uh, to varying success. Brian tries to use his special aftershave. Yeah, that is one of my favourite bits. Sex Panther scent. <laughs> but he's got all of those aftershaves, hasn't he, in, the, in his pull-out drawer thing. The locker that opens up the is locker, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just so typical of like a certain kind of man who's like bathing myself in this super strong disgusting scent <laughs> that will be what gets ladies and i love brick's attempt to uh hit on her he's like there's a party it's a <laughs> like, are you trying to say this he's like yes <laughs> uh he's really cool brick is the best character throughout yeah yeah he's so funny he has so many like just cute little moments that just really make you laugh <laughs> yeah uh, but Ron is the one that actually manages to get a night out with her and to treat her to a show with their jazz flute. Mm. Uh, so they start dating. Everything's going really well until a burrito is thrown out of the car and Jack Black's character yeah. kicks Baxter off the bridge. Oh my God, that bit. Yeah. That was so sad. And did you see at the end, there's like 20 outtakes of that happening. Oh yeah. But yeah, he's using like a stuffed toy dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and at one, he just like tries to kick it over. It just comes back and basically hits him on the head or goes behind him or something. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I could have done that twice. It would just make me laugh. Baxter was the best bit of the whole film. Second to Brick. 
I was going to say, you can have everything yeah. is the best. Um, but no, Sam, it made me think when I saw Ron and Baxter's little relationship, it made me think of you and Bucky. And he had his little jammers on and the little retainer and they were sleeping together. It was so adorable. I would be very sad if somebody kicked Bucky off a bridge. Yeah. I would be very impressed if somebody kicked Bucky <laughs> off a bridge. Oh. Yeah. Really sad as well. But he's a far bigger dog than Baxter. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Bucky but, is a Labrador. Um, but I hadn't seen this film before and Sam had and obviously knew what was coming was like, hang on, hang on. I can't watch this. Um, obviously knew he was going off the bridge and it was terrible. It, it turned into a horror film for a minute there. It did. <laughs> but actually hilarious because A, it was so clearly a teddy, wasn't it? When it went over <laughs> yeah. the side, which was like nice. And Jack Black is always awesome and everything. So Including yeah. Kung Fu Panda. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a good film. <laughs> it's a good film. Shall we just pause the Anchorman <laughs> chat for a second to talk about Kung Fu Panda? No, let's pause it to talk about Never Ending Story Three. Yes. Jack Black. Yeah, very similar role. A very, <laughs> very lesser known role, Jack Black. A small ray of light in an otherwise terrible film. No. What's the best thing about Never Ending Story 3? Yeah, Jack Black. <laughs> but still. So with the loss of Baxter, Ron starts his downward spiral into depression and he misses his time on air. So Veronica steps up, does a fantastic job and then she gets the co-anchor host spot on the team. Everything goes from bad to worse when Ron reacts badly and they start to fight against each other, leading to Veronica to change the auto cue so he tells everyone oh, in yeah. San Diego to fuck off, which leads to his instant dismissal from the station. <laughs> yeah. I love the bit before that, though, when they're teeing up the idea that he just reads everything on the teleprompter. And he says, he's just doing the show, and then he says, good night, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy? And then the guy in the control room is like, who put a question mark at the end of it? You know he just <laughs> you know reads everything. Reads everything. <laughs> yeah. That's such a good joke. Yeah, <laughs> but then it's a really, the other a really funny bit from the film for me was when Garth's character reacts to Ron saying the words and he's just there like, Ryan Warren, why did you say that? <laughs> yeah. And it's just really, really funny. He just storms off. <laughs> That's so good. Dr. Whatever his name is from 30 Rock. Spichemin. Dr. Spichemin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And actually that brings up for me, there were so many characters that I love in this film, like so many actors that I love yeah, in this film. Too. Just, yeah, every single person I was like, oh, it's him, it's Fred Armisen, he's doing something. And I read something about the fact that, because loads of them were like working on N on SNL at the time, or they were SNL alumni, so loads of the lines, they were given like a general gist. And... Um, they then just did what they wanted with it. And they might have done like 10 different takes where they just said different things. So like San Diego, meaning the whale's vagina, that was like an example of one that he said, but they just said something different every time. I was like, that takes something, that takes real skill. Yeah. Like Luke, mm. we tried to do a, a fun little improv <laughs> earlier, skit. didn't we? A skit yeah, just terribly. for fun to test the microphones. And yeah, it, we couldn't think of anything to move it forward really <laughs> we were like we cannot think of any accident yeah. ever yeah that was terrible our skit is like i am testing the microphone <laughs> that's that but i am a robot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so very i just find it so impressive when people can be like funny on the spot and again like steve Crow. He did loads of those, didn't he? Where yeah. he would just try like twenty different things. Some of them would just make him and everyone else laugh out loud, and then he was like, "Okay, that's the one that we're going to use." Yeah. I thought I'd noticed that that there's a lot of people who used to be in SNL as well, and I specifically looked up Will Farrell because it was around that time he really, really like shot up and made it. And I looked at like his filmography. The year before is when he did Elf, which obviously was mm. massive and it still is a massive cult Christmas film. And then this, the following year, and those, like, that double hit of films, he's never really sunk back down in, like, his level of yeah. comedy and fame and stuff like that, is it? Before that, he just done a few... He's done a couple of other, like, bit parts in films, but it's mostly TV stuff. Yeah. Mm. But don't forget, in a few weeks, we're going to be reviewing Spirited. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little bit I can't wait for that. Yeah. So hold that thought down. We can discuss this at Christmas. Definitely one of his best films. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward yeah. to that. So that's like 20 years after Alf. Yeah. Really, yeah. him doing another Christmas yeah. film. Oh, kind of. Yeah. Which is, yeah, not too quick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Next in the plot, uh, Ron carries on with his kind of miserable state whilst Veronica starts doing all of the big storylines. And the biggest story of the year is the panda giving birth. And whilst they're at the zoo to get the shot, Veronica is pushed into the Kodiak bear enclosure. Uh, She's nowhere to be seen, so Ed Harkin, the station director, uh, phones up Ron to come and report on the story. When he gets there, which, he finds... Sorry, can I just say, which makes no sense, because what, there are no other people... Yeah, that, any other person on the team could have Yeah, it. this is like a theme in the films that we've been watching, isn't it? That if you just slightly tweaks it, you would just resolve the problem, and it would be fine. Yeah, don't yeah. use your one disgrace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that just seems like a key thing for life. Like, I've never fired somebody and then gone... The one person that could do this is the person I just fired. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, carry on. Uh, So when Ron arrives, he finds Veronica and instead of going for help, jumps in the enclosure with her. Uh, Then the best scene of the film (laughs) is when Ron is joined not only by his prior crew, but Baxter the dog. Yes, I love that he comes back. back. And that conversation he has with the bears on the subtitles is so funny. Yeah. Because mm. dogs are the best. Dogs are the best. Dogs are good. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I like the film. <laughs> Dan, bring it back. The whole world is going to... The whole world is oh. listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dogs are the best. Mm. <laughs> Correct. I love dogs. <laughs> we'll keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that you're saying Isle of Dogs. <laughs> I love dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> Is this a good time to bring up that fourzy jump they do? Oh, when they go, <laughs> buy, yeah. go, yeah. when they go to buy suits. Yes. <laughs> it made me laugh so much. And obviously, we're a fourzy. We could totally do a fourzy yeah. jump. We should do And we could jump. go buy suits. <laughs> I actually sure. need to buy a new suit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go for my to charity. Should we talk about that now? <laughs> and let's... Probably just going to go for a navy suit. Why do you go to oh, charity okay. if you need a suit? Grown up in a waste <laughs> term. I don't want to talk about this on air. <laughs> How the world? <laughs> My penis got too big for them. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's why I was dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But then, after reporting the story, the network picks them up, and Veronica and Ron become anchors for the World News Centre. uh, And then everyone has a very happy and successful life. Yeah. The end. Yeah. (laughs) Literally, every person looking at me like, so how are you going to ruin this film for us? (laughs) Well, Uh, let me give you just a little bit of the history. Abby, what what research have you done about this movie? I'd love to hear Make us better with facts, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a delight, by the way. Mm-hmm. You are a delight. We love you. <laughs> I actually want to know your trivia. Go, go, go. Yeah. Oh, so my trivia was that Will Ferrell has got a degree in journalism and had a couple yeah. of anchor jobs. Really? Yeah, yeah, before he then started going into comedy more full time. And when they pitched this film, they pitched it something like 20 times. And everybody was like, you can't make a full film about being a news reporter it's just not funny hmm. and then they did make it and it was funny really funny yeah. it was funny but I did think the story was a little bit weak yeah yeah <clears throat> so I get what they mean but it was yeah. def- obviously definitely worth it because yeah. it was popular and really funny but it was just the odd one line that's like yeah. strung together that made it really funny yeah, yeah yeah and I guess that that's kind of probably what they were saying why they were saying don't do it but actually because it's Will Ferrell that held itself together anyway as like yeah. being yeah. a good film so yeah. and the rest of the cast because they all worked so well together yeah they were so good um but also i realized or i saw at the beginning um written and starring will ferrell and i always love that written and starring like i'm just gonna write a movie yeah. about this really cool character and then i'm just gonna put myself in there and that makes perfect sense if he was actually yeah. an anchor man he just mm. wrote about what he knew and then yeah. just did it in a really funny way mm. so, yeah funny Hmm. And it had that really cool fight scene between the different news crews as oh, well. Yeah. And 
I know we're not discussing the sequel, but it goes even bigger for Ant Man too. Really, like really? loads more different casts in there. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> I liked that, but it went on too long for me. Like I'm not a big fan of a fight scene anyway, and we've like spoken a couple of times about other fight scenes in other things that we've watched, and I'm like, yes, this kept me entertained. This fight scene, I was like, yeah. Like I think a funny fight scene, it's not. You have to do a lot to make that, don't you? There was that bit afterwards where Rick was like, I killed someone. <laughs> that bit was hilarious. With a trident. <laughs> With a trident. <laughs> that was really funny and it maybe had to have the fight scene to do that. But I was like, mm. this is a big chunk that... Yeah, I think that I had noted that down as well. It is funny, but for me, I that's kind of just on the cusp of that kind of silly slapstick comedy that I like, like Airplane, that old classic film, yeah. Yeah. that's a bit too far for me. Mm. And this film is hilarious and I love it, but that fight scene, I'm just a bit like, oh yeah, like you kind of felt like, I'm kind of happy with how this joke is now, can we move on? Because <laughs> yeah, it's clearly yeah. fictional, but then it yeah. becomes unbelievable when it's fake yeah. reality. Yeah. When that yeah. Fight scene. <clears throat> yeah, but then it's got that line afterwards. Well, that escalated quickly, yeah. which actually has become a really ubiquitous line over the past 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like, again, that's a real SNL thing, isn't it? Is to take a pretty regular, like mundane situation and to really blow it up to like extraordinary size and make it massive. Like yeah. my favourite Will Ferrell ever is The Hot Tub. Oh, where yeah, yeah. <laughs> where are they swingers? I don't know exactly how it happens, but they just keep getting in hot tubs with people and then just <laughs> saying really inappropriate things or just being all over each other. And it's so like regular, you can see it happening, but obviously they take it further and further and further and it's yeah. just ridiculous. That is something he's really good at, I think. I thought you were gonna say the sketch where they're he, him and that other woman are cheerleaders for the chess tournament. That is <laughs> Which also is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only other thing I was going to say was, um, it's directed by Adam McKay. His first, I think it's his first film that he does. His directorial debut. Yeah. Oh. You could say that. Yeah. Um, but obviously he's gone on to do loads of other things as well. Um, and moves in a more serious direction. Um is then one of the like co-creators of Succession. Um, mm. And actually, when we were watching that, I noticed that Will Farrell also is a producer on that. Oh, so really? them on together Succession, yeah. On Succession, yeah. So they've obviously kind of... I mean, it does have some funny elements to it, but it's, it's, it's pitched as like a drama, you know, type show. So it's kind of interesting to see their career trajectory together from that funny stuff and to this more serious work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Really good. good insight, Dan. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, oh, cheers. That's good insight, Dan. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Just leave the facts to everybody. Okay? <laughs> yeah. um, we haven't mentioned the main woman. Christina, Christina Applegate. Applegate. That's yeah. a great name. That's that what I would like to say. Yeah, yeah, true. She's Applegate. really good. She plays like the kind of the straight man very well, doesn't yeah, she? She yeah, she does. Yeah, but she's not very likable. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I was like, oh. But I guess a woman in the 70s succeeding in a business had to have that like personality. Maybe. And I did love the fact that she, like at the beginning when she was saying like, um, I get treated like shit, but I just crack on with it. Mm -hmm. And I like, I've got to do what I've got to do. And she's like really making it. And it's, I really love that. But she just overall just wasn't a very likable person. I think there's so much, isn't there, about what women need to be, to be either in the workplace or to be liked. Yeah. Like I always find it funny people... There's not that many of them, but people hate women serial killers more than they hate men serial killers. Really? And it's almost like people maybe have an expectation that men have that in them, but are really surprised when women do because women are supposed to be loving and motherly and maternal and all mm. of that stuff. So, yeah, like you say, maybe it's that she had to be that, yeah. like, character. Yeah. And As, she's also, oh, sorry, no, no, you go. I'll say she definitely did at the beginning because they're all hitting on her and she had no other twist than to yeah. say, like, just piss off everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, she, I don't know, she can't really be nice in that situation. Yeah. But I did want her as a film went on, but I think a lot of characters in this movie just 
I just didn't enjoy watching. The same as what's that other guy's name? The really smarmy one, Champ. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he had so many moments that were just like, oh, yeah. you're the worst. Mm. And even Ron Burgundy is. His likableness comes from how ridiculous and childlike he is, yeah. as opposed to him actually being likable. Yeah. There's yeah. almost nobody in the film that's an actually yeah. likable person. If he didn't person. have a dog, he'd be way less likable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're saying Baxter is the favourite character then? Oh yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> or Jack Black. I mean, I don't like the idea that he chucked the dog off the bridge, kicked the dog off the bridge, but you just know he's a good guy. Jack yeah. Black, he's got to be a good guy. No one wants a burrito chucked in their face. True. Exactly. He can forgive of kicking a dog off a bridge. Oh, yeah, he ruined his bike, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. And he had burrito on his clothes. Yeah. Wait, he kicked someone's dog off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and we forgive him for no. that. the best character. <laughs> Not for that. Lucy, you have said three characters the best character. I know, I'm sorry. Pick a lane. As research for this, I was going <laughs> to look up, uh, look in my Invisible Women book which is a book about how women have been forgotten through history. Oh. And then I was like, you know what? Don't be a bummer. Take a week <laughs> off. <laughs> Everyone will thank you for it. Just enjoy the film. It was the 70s. It was a bad time. Yeah. And I think that film knows that it yeah. was a bad time. Yeah. 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 Um, can I just say we also haven't mentioned the sex scene? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's really surreal. They're that's on the rainbow weird. and yeah, that was really strange actually. I'd forgotten all about that. But again, like there's that bit in Elf, isn't there, with the um, narwhal? Like there's just a couple of bits in each yeah. film where it's just oh, like yeah. just a bit of yeah. Odyssey or the snowman. I didn't see that narwhal bit as being odd or out of place. Though. Well, it was animated. It was the yeah, only no, bit that not... was, wasn't it? The no. snowman. Yeah. Oh, the snowman? Yeah. yeah. Oh, not the narwhal. Hi, buddy. Yeah. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It just pops up. It's just... He talks. He says that line. It's like yeah. made up of like Play-Doh, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. Like that sort of animation. Yeah, but... But nothing else Oh, is... yeah, but it's not like a cartoon animation. Yeah, but nothing else is in the whole yeah. film. Oh, oh, yeah, I know, but... Made of plastic, you know. But for me, I didn't see it as out of place because he's just in the North Pole and there's elves. Everything's made out of plastic in the North Pole. Well, it's like elves and stuff. Yeah, but they just... were all real. <laughs> I may, yeah. No, it's shoot. three against one. <laughs> <laughs> End off. Okay, 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 cool. End off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we come to the time in the discussion where we give a score to the film. As usual, we have our convoluted scoring where the total is out of 60 and each category has a maximum of 20. So we're looking at enjoyability, shareability and masterpiece ability with each last scoring each category out of five. So let's start with enjoyability. Luce? I gave it a three. Ab? Three. Dan? Uh, 3.5. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to give it a 4.5. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'll go first and base that reaction. Um, so I thought, I just really wanted to watch a film which made me laugh a lot. Uh, films make you feel completely different things, but this week I just wanted to be entertained. And honestly, like, there's so many laughs in there. I don't think I've seen a film with that many funny bits since 1991's Pure Luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Luce and Abby, you went less at three. I just enjoyed the funny bits. I enjoyed the laugh. Laugh? No. I did enjoy the funny bits. Um, but there were just too many characters in there that I didn't like. Yeah, mine was exactly in the same, really. What I felt was I'd had quite like a busy, stressful week and it was exactly what I needed then. But I did find myself like doing a bit of other stuff. Ben? Anything? Are you saying here? Uh, yeah, I like I like that film a lot. Um, and I was happy to watch it again. But I think, um, you know, it's funny. But like I said, the storyline is a little bit flimsy, I suppose. Um, but yeah, overall, love that film. Cool. Let's look at shareability. Dan. Uh, again, I would probably give it a three, I think. Like, it is brilliant. But I think probably now everyone who is going to see that film has seen it. Ab? I give it a three. Because of the way you're looking at me. Three. Lucy? <laughs> a three? 
Yeah, I'd agree with a three for that. Okay. So you're going to be like, ten. <laughs> I give it a ten. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with what Dan said. Everyone that would enjoy that film has probably already seen it. Yeah. If you're a Will Ferrell fan, it was 20 years ago. Like You've watched it by now. I, I loved at the Will beginning, Ferrell. Lucy said, there will be spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. hey, I don't know what those spoilers even would be <laughs> oh, in this film. Sorry, They're yeah. okay in the end. Sorry, we told Back you. To it was in Back the script. To the script. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah. like you say, everyone's seen it that wants to see it. Yeah. So the last category is Masterpiece Ability. Abby? I think it's a three from me, Sam. Okay. Lucy? I'll give it a 3.5 Oh, can I go a 2.5 oh, please <laughs> and thank you and I will give it a 3 <laughs> hmm. Bruce, 2 from you I just think it's in it's own way like to make people laugh and to go out and just make a really fun movie then it it does that job. But I, I think for me, right. it was the redeeming thing. I would have gone lower. The redeeming thing was the improv. That's what made it yeah, true. more of a masterpiece for me. Like, the storyline was a bit flimsy. It felt of its time. Like, we've done other films around that time and said, actually, they could have been filmed yesterday and maybe we like wouldn't have noticed i think you probably did know that it was in the 2000s even though it was supposed to be in the 70s um yeah and to use one of your things from earlier sam i wouldn't have wanted to see it on the big screen like it didn't make any difference yeah, it'd be a bit of a waste of a cinema yeah i wanted to be in my house in my pajamas just sat on the sofa yeah yeah, yeah and i think have you summed up pretty well there well, it, thanks it was a Good film, felt like a long SNL sketch in places. <laughs> uh, a very funny, watchable film if you are having a hard week, but probably not the greatest cinematic event uh, of all time. So, yeah, I think that seems fair. So with those scores, it has got a total of 37 out of 60, oh, which yeah. is a pretty good hmm. score, I think, for yeah. a comedy film from 2004. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I think it holds its own. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Although I just got really worried and upset because I don't, like, sometimes I tag the directors or people that are in the film and I just got really worried that Will Ferrell would hear this and be upset with me. Maybe with you, but not with Dan. What? <laughs> Why? Because Dan was saying how great Will Ferrell was in this movie, how he had, you know, it was like, his best films and then we see he brings it back for Spirited and we're saying Will Ferrell's really good. Yeah. Written and starring. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. We're okay. Yeah, we love Luce, Luce Will Ferrell. A lower total score. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. We'll go after Luce. Will Ferrell, I think, probably collectively is one of our favourite like actors or yeah, like I think he's comedic amazing. actors. I mean, everyone loves Will Ferrell, right? Yeah, definitely. We love you. We love you, Will. <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, please come and be a guest on the podcast. Yeah, if you're Ferrell. listening to this podcast, it's a fucking miracle. Is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If anyone is listening. Thank you, Will, for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming along to this week's Lads Film Club and joining us while we discussed Anchorman. We'd love to know what you thought about it too. Did you find it as funny as we did? Let us know on our Twitter or Instagram. You can find the details in the description. So, if you enjoyed listening to our podcast, please leave us a rating and review. And don't forget, share with your own lads. And we're not picky. Share it with anyone. Maybe not with the evening news team. Not for Anchorman, anyway. So grab your popcorn. Round up your lads. Get watching. And join us next week. Bye. 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 I love lamp. <laughs> <laughs>